evening, friends of the creaking door. This is your host inviting you into the inner sanctum. Come in. Come on in. Oh, come on. We love company. Simply can't do enough to them. We've got lots of games custom designed for our guests. They'll simply slay you. The favorite's called a tisket, a casket. <laughs> but the game we play best is called Revival. Oh, it's wonderful. You pass out and we try to revive you. If we don't, you don't. <laughs> And now for our eerie spell, the hitchhiking corpse. Climb up on the driver's seat. Sit close to the driver. Sean O'Hara, the bewitched man with deep-set eyes. Hear what he has to tell about the beautiful corpse of Maydock County. The girl who lost her head over him. Eileen, the last time I saw her, she was standing where she always waits for me. On the little white bridge where the road takes a bend around Moon Hollow. I could hear her call for me to stop. Go, go, go. I'm going to go. Go. But I wasn't going to stop for her. Not anymore. My mind was made up to that. And then a lightning flash burned over her like a million lighted candles. And she was standing there where she always waited for me. Without her head. Eileen had lost her head. Am I right in my mind now, I'm wondering? These things I know, these things that I saw, was it a dream? A man's imagination gets tipsy when he drives a great silver van 400 miles in the loneliness of the night. Eileen. The first time I saw her, she was standing where she stood the last time on a little white bridge near Moon Hollow. I'm in, miss. Ah, yeah. Sit deep in your seat with your head low. It's a black mark in the book for me. If the company inspector see you riding in the cab, I'll be docked. They won't see me. Only you can see me, son. Only I can see. Uh, you're calling me by name. No. I'm making up a name for you. But it is my name, Sean. Sean O'Hara. It's an uncanny bit of making up you just did, Mr. Miss... Try, Sean. If you try, you too can do an uncanny bit of making up. With your hair like it is, and your face, just one name suits. Only one name. And my name? Eileen. I am Eileen. And just where are you riding to? To Maydock County. But Sunday, not tonight. Hey, that county's a good 80-mile ride from Moon Hollow. It, is it someday, I heard you say? Yes, someday I'll be riding to Maydock County. And it will be you who will take me there. Oh, as little to that, I always pass through Maydock. It's on my route. My people came from up there. It's a big house we once had. A great big house. Without windows. Without windows, you say? There was a great hall and a great long table with my people sitting round it. The living and the dead. The living and the... <laughs> a house without windows and now it's the living and the dead. You're a pretty one. But you're as batty as a loon. Am I really a pretty one to you, Sean? Sure. Pretty hair, eyes to light up a man's dream. Dainty little hands. The two of them fit into one of mine. A face? A face, Sean. No, the face I cannot praise. Why not? With all the war paint on it, if if I didn't bite my tongue, I might say that what I see smeared over your cheeks is, is blood. Don't bite your tongue, Sean. You're getting out. Trust Sean O'Hara to pick up a gibbering farm girl who smears her face with chicken blood. Good night to you. Good night, Sean. I'll be waiting again tomorrow night at Moon Hollow. I'll be watching for you. I watched her go, sailing off on the mist. As high as my eyes could go, I could see her riding into the sky like, like a night witch. 
and blowing into the smoke of the moon. There had been no Eileen. I dreamed her up in my fat head. A man's imagination gets tipsy when he drives a great silver van in the loneliness of the night. Way up, I pulled into the yard behind old Morgan's diner to sleep the night from two to six, curled up in my cab like I always did. I'm a hearty man and a steady sleeper, not given to dreaming. But this night, bad luck to me, I dreamed. She was leaning over me, Eileen, with the moon in her eyes. And now the blood was wet on her cheeks and running down in big red beads to splash my shirt. The old mill house in Maida, where the water falls in Maida. The old mill house in Maida, where the water falls. The old mill house in Maida, where the water falls. You must see that the dead go home. See that the dead. Eileen. Eileen! But there was no Eileen. I've been dreaming. Dreaming, but the radio was playing loud enough to wake the dead. The dreaming man doesn't turn on the radio. Eileen! You always wake up like a worn lion of hell. Uh, what? It's me, Morgan. I guess you've had all the music you need to wake you up. It was you who turned my radio on? Me, it was. Were you thinking the radio turned itself on? I... I had a dream about a girl. A nightmare's more like what you had. From the looks of you, you were thrashing about in that seat and beating yourself on the face with your fist. Beating myself? Why is that? Well, the blood. All over your shirt. Blood? Stop looking bewitched, O'Hara, and look in your truck mirror to your nose. You gave yourself a nosebleed in your sleep, and that, my boy, was no dream. I was an hour late for unloading in the Cloverville Depot. Oh, hang on. Uh, yeah, Red. Come over to the van a minute, where the loaders can't get an airful. Oh, you're acting funny. We got everything off the inventory calls for, but there are three other items. I threw a canvas cover over them before the boys got a look at them. Did you look into your van? What? what what's under the canvas cover, Red? Coffins, O'Hara. Three old pine wood coffins. You want to tell me something? What? Well, to tell you? Well, sure, I... I almost forgot about those coffins. It's a side job. Some yokel undertaker down by Moon Hollow. I, I'm to drop them off somewhere. Uh, save them trucking charges that way and make myself $20 side money. Quit lying to me, O'Hara. And to yourself. Oh, lying, you say? But it's a fact, Red. Positively a fact. And I'm giving you half of the $20 for covering me. Wasn't one to pass up $20 for trucking three empty coffins. The coffins aren't empty, O'Hara. And you never took a job from any local undertaker either. Yeah. You... You seem to know a lot about something. I know Route 266. I was born and raised here. What is there to know? For one thing, the red-headed witch of Moon Hollow, maybe. You might be trucking the dead for her. Eileen? Or any name you give her. She was Katie to a trucker named Conway who had you run once. To hear Conway tell it, Katie or... Eileen was always trying to get him to take her dead out of Moon Hollow to somewhere else. To Maida Carly, to the old mill house. Or somewhere. Anyhow, that's how the story usually goes. But what she's really out to do is drive you crazy. How? How do you know there is such a girl? Those pine boxes in there. I saw them on Conway's truck once, like they're on yours now. Conway dumped them right back in Moon Hollow. Take my advice. From now on, pass the redhead up. Jam your accelerator to the floorboard and go past her at 80. I don't know what I'll do. It 
what I did. Bad luck to me on the trip back was to look for the waterfalls and the old mill house. When I came to the Maydock County line, was there an old mill house where the waterfalls, I was wondering? Or was I a man looking hard to lose his mind? I brought one of the caskets to the ground. It wasn't empty, but there wasn't much weight to it either. I opened it. It held the dead all right, but not the face or the body of the dead. It was only the skeleton. The skeleton of someone dead more years than the mind can imagine. And there was a waterfall in the deep woods. The music of water, Mylene's voice splashing in it. an old mill house down below the rocks. A stall house without windows, like Eileen had said. I pulled an old rusted bolt and opened the door to one great room and a table that went from wall to wall. It was old. The flying dust could blind a man so he'd only see what his tipsy imagination would want him to see. I saw Eileen. Eileen was standing before me with her arms out. Like a thin shadow my eyes could see through to the wall. Go bring the casket, son. Go bring the dead home. Well, here's something terribly new in thumbing a ride. A witch hiker. And a neat switch, too, on the old boy meets girl formula. This one's boy meets girl. <laughs> Eileen, now there's a bonny lass, dead set on getting ahead. And if she keeps up the pace, she'll have O'Hara shorn of his sanity any mile now. But let's get back beside our bewitched trucker. A man's imagination gets tipsy when he drives a great silver van in the loneliness of the night. But there was an old mill house where the water falls, as Eileen has said. It was there I left three caskets of the old dead. Passing Moon Hollow on the way back, I stopped in at Morgan's Diner for some warm and coffee. It was just old Morgan putting his profits into the screaming jukebox. Oh, Harry, it's you. Nobody else. I've been waiting all night for you to come. I stopped for a time in Mayduck. Well, <laughs> agitated the way you look. Have I slipped out on you for a meal? No. I don't understand the looks of you. The shoebox. It's for you, you see? Your name's written on it. Sean O'Hara. And left by whom? The devil's own daughter. O'Hara, her face was enough to send the man hiding in his car. A, a face all smeared with blood, was it? You have seen her, too. We are all acquaintances by now. I left Morgan's prying eyes. I opened the shoebox. It held a small white envelope and an old rusted tin can. I opened the envelope. Two tickets there were to a costume party in the Moon Hollow Firehouse for the next night. And the tin can full of money. A shower of Indian pennies and buffalo nickels. Coins with a grit and tarnish of years on them. Like some miser had saved them in a secret nook of the kitchen. That was too much for a tired working man to puzzle out. My poor head would have none of it. I had a load to hold back that night. There was time enough for puzzles another night. She'd be standing on the little white bridge where the road takes a bend. And then I would put my questions to her. She was standing there the next night watching for me. Calling for me to stop. Sean! Stop, Sean! Her hair was wild as before and her face the same. Her dress was changed. It was a costume now she was wearing. All silk and gaiety like she was dressed up for a party. Sean! Yes, Eileen. You weren't going to stop. For a fact, no. You'll not be riding in my cab. And I'll not be trucking your dead ancestors anymore. Not for a barrel of Nicholson pennies. Here, take your money back. No. It was grandmother's savings. 
She wants you to have it. Oh, so there's a grandmother too, is there? Yes. And when will she be riding along to the old mill house? Tonight, Sean. She will ride with you tonight. And after that, I'll be riding with you to Maydock too. And that settles the count of your people? No. It still leaves you, Sean. Me? Am I hearing you say me? Yes, you too will sit at the long table in the great hall of the dead. You will sit beside me. Alive, is it to be? Or dead? Dead, Sean. Like us. And what will snuff me out, a hardy man like me, without a sickness? You will just die. Your heart will just stop. My heart will stop. <laughs> you don't want to sit beside me? It's not my way of wooing a lady. Sean? Yes, I mean. Do you like my costume? I do. And what's it for? The dance at the firehouse. I thought you would take me. I think not. Then I will go alone. Good night, Sean. Compliments of the evening to you, miss. Instead of sleeping in old Morgan's yard, there I was just before the midnight hour, in the costume of a trucker with a tottering mind, and looking for Eileen in the firehouse. I found her in her silken gaiety where the Japanese lanterns were dimmest, wearing a mask like the others were, but not dancing like the others. Eileen? Sean. You're not surprised I came? I knew you'd come. You're not dancing? The music is stopped? Uh, it's unmasking time. Midnight's not a minute away. The callers are not... Attention! Attention, everybody! It's midnight! Everybody! Unmask! Everybody! Everybody! You're, you're not unmasking, Eileen. You unmask me, Sean O'Hara. All right, I'll... Speak again. Say my name again. Sean O'Hara. The, the voice. It's not the voice of Eileen. I am not Eileen. Put your hand to my mask, Sean. You're, you're an old lady. I am old. And the life you see is the last I have to show. Look at me for the last time, O'Hara. I am Eileen's grandmother. But Eileen, she was here. Her hand was in mine. Dressed in the costume with a silken gaiety you're now wearing. Eileen slips away. To leave me with you, you have business with me now, Sean. Business, you say? Take me to Maydock County. The old mill house where the water falls. I'll be waiting to ride with you, O'Hara. Don't be long. I drove the lonely night to the Maida County line with my freight of storage eggs and canned goods and the dead in a pine box. The old grandmother in her silks was in her casket. And I didn't bother to ask whose job it was. I put the questions to Eileen the next time she waited for me where the road takes a bend around Moon Hollow. And she was there like I know she'd be, pointing her thumb to hit your ride. Sean, stop for me! Sean! But I didn't stop this last time. I did what the checker red lacy said Conway failed to do and what I must do. I passed her up. I pushed the gas accelerator to the floor and passed her by an eight. <laughs> I shriek where the highway bends into Moon Hollow. But I didn't leave Eileen behind. She was on the seat beside me. You didn't want to stop, Sean. She was beside me. Without her head. I'm dead, Sean. Dead. Now drive me to Maydock County. Imagination gets tipsy. 
The sheriff of Meta County is one to know it. And the doctor beside him looking at me with eyes of pity is one to know it, too. I hear them talking to me. But the words go sailing into the smoke of the moon. I listen. But I do not understand. You ran over on the bridge down in Moon Hollow last night. A 20-ton truck, O'Hara. Her head was severed. I'll tell you all you need to know about Eileen Grant, her grandmother, and her people. They were run out of the old mill out of Maydock County about 30 years ago. Native superstition did that. The family was thought to have, well, call it evil powers. Where'd you take Eileen to, O'Hara? Huh? Eileen, what did you do with the body? I... I'll take you to her. Come, I'll take you to her. I took them, the sheriff and the doctor, to the old mill house where the water falls. Here's Sheriff is Eileen and her people sitting around the table in the great hall of the dead. Well, to, to do this, to... To set them around the table like that, you... You couldn't be in your right mind, man. No, I couldn't be. And I'm the one to admit that. And I'm not in my right mind to sit here beside Eileen now. What can there ever be between a man and a girl? Sitting and rotten in an old mill... For their ancestors looking, looking on. Oh, oh, Harry. Oh, Harry. Say, Doc, take a look at him. Oh, Harry's dead. D- dead? To, to sit down and, and die just like that? Just like that, Sheriff. O'Hara's heart just stopped. As if he willed it to stop. Now that O'Hara's given up the ghost, there's a job open. Somebody... As a special inducement to insanity, a pretty girl goes along with every truck. Oh, sorry, friend. I can't tell you which of the two jobs is the more harrowing. (laughs) Moral? Oh, sure. I've got one carved right here on my vertebrae. This is for any motorist who runs across Eileen. Give her the go-by, Bob. All she'll get you is dead mileage. (laughs) <laughs> Pleasant dreams. Inner Sanctum has been brought to you through the facilities of the United States Armed Forces Radio Service, Voice of Information and Education.